Nearly 25 years ago, Subaru introduced a small wagon-like SUV to America called the Forester. Now at the time, it was designed to go head-to-head -head with the just introduced Toyota RAV4 and Honda CRV. And of course, because Americans love SUVs, this quickly became one of co the company's best-selling models, with Subaru easily selling over 150,000 units every year. Now over the years, the company has made the Forester larger and more powerful. And back in 2019, they introduced their most technologically advanced Forester yet, this all-new fit generation which had even more technology and refinement on the inside despite the fact that it lost its turbocharged engine. Now for 2022, in order to keep pace with all the competition, Subaru has made some small updates to the Forester in terms of the exterior styling and in the form of this new trim level. This is the 2022 Forester Wilderness, the most off-road capable, rugged version of the Forester ever with extra ground clearance, all-terrain tires, and a unique look on the outside and on the inside. I've already had a chance to drive this vehicle when I was out in Bend, Oregon a few months ago. And this week I have the car for a full week at my hometown so I'm going to live with it on a daily basis and at the end of this video we're going to find out has Subaru made enough changes to the Forester to keep this model competitive? Stay tuned to find out. Now the sad news about this fifth generation Forester is that Subaru canceled the four cylinder turbo engine that they used to offer on the XT model. If you guys want a turbocharged engine, you're gonna have to step it up to the Outback, which Subaru of course will still happily sell you in wilderness form. But if you guys don't want an Outback, let's go ahead and talk about the powertrain changes because there actually are a couple of changes for the wilderness model for 2022. Now, of course, this is a Subaru, so their boxer flat four-cylinder engine is gonna be standard. This is, of course, part of their newest engine family, part of the FA engine family. It's still a naturally aspirated 2.5 liter engine with variable valve timing with direct injection. It makes 182 horsepower and 176 pound-feet of torque. That power figure has not changed. This is the only engine available in the Forester still, which makes me sad. I really was hoping that Subaru would do a hybrid version of this or a turbo version of this. However, for the Wilderness model, they did give it a unique transmission. They all come with a CVT, of course, their Lineatronic CVT. However, this has a revised CVT with different ratios, a lower first physical gear, in quotation marks, and it also offers up to eight manual modes via the paddle shifters. It does help improve acceleration for this vehicle, which we'll test out with our 0-60 timing equipment. Of course, this is a Subaru, so it comes standard with symmetrical all-wheel drive. Uh, and this model here also comes with skid plates, raised ground clearance, which we'll talk about in just a moment. The transmission has lowered the fuel economy of this model to 25 in the city, 28 on the highway. It's about a two MPG reduction versus the other uh, models of the Forester, which is a little disappointing. Thankfully, it still runs on regular gas. The Wilderness model, because of the upgraded transmission, can tow more. This will tow up to 3,000 pounds. And despite it having all the extra gear, it's really not that much heavier. This weighs in at around 3,600 pounds, about 50 pounds heavier versus a uh, Forester Limited or a Forester Premium. So let's take a look at the exterior styling of this 2022 Forester Wilderness. You can see my tester is a very nice color combination here in this autumn green metallic with a lot of the black accents, the black hexagonal grille that you get with the Wilderness model. I also like the black hood graphic here. It's not really a graphic, it's more just a, a piece of like tape on the hood, which again is supposed to be there to keep reflections of the sun from getting in your face when you're off-roading. All Foresters now come with, of course, full LED headlights that they introduced on the 2019 model. You can see the turn signal is annoyingly not an LED. You have steering responsive adaptive LED low and high beams. You have an LED daytime running light. And then the Wilderness gives you this hexagonal shape to the LED fog light. It almost looks like a rigid industries fog light, uh, which is what you find on a lot of Jeeps, on some Ford Broncos and some Toyota products. Uh, you also have the nice extra cladding here for the front bumper. You have the silver metallic look over here along with a front skid plate. You can also get additional skid plates from the dealership. Uh, and you can see the Wilderness also comes with their front 180 degree camera system, which definitely gives you some nice um, views if you guys are gonna be taking this vehicle off-roading. Now you can see, looking at the rest of the side profile, this is just a mid-cycle refresh. So aside from the new front end, the rest of the side profile really hasn't changed. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the key specifics here that you get on the Wilderness model. You can see the Wilderness includes these black finished 17 inch wheels uh, with these Yokohama Geolander all-terrain tires, um, which definitely give it a more 
uh, all-terrain, you know, rugged look. It's got the raised white lettering. I'm surprised they're only a 225 width tire. I was expecting Subaru to go with a bigger wheel. They could have easily gone to like a 235, 245. You can see the cladding here on the Wilderness gets a little bit more aggressive here to give it more of a rugged look. You have this very large Subaru Wilderness badge here. And then when this generation came out, uh, this was about a couple inches longer than the previous generation at around 182 inches long. Its wheelbase is around 105.9 inches long. It's about an inch longer than the previous generation. And then, of course, if you guys plan to do a lot of outdoorsy things with the Wilderness, uh, what Subaru really gave you here uh, are the um, upgraded roof rails. Of course, you have the anodized copper accents that you get with the Wilderness, but this will hold up to 220 pounds of static load on the roof or dynamic load on the roof. That's basically when you're traveling down the road, you can comfortably or safely put up to 220 pounds up there. And if you guys want to put a roof temp up there, it now will hold up to 800 pounds which is great if you guys wanna put like a three person tent up there. Uh, that panoramic roof is also uh, included on this trim, uh, which definitely lets in a lot of light. It's standard actually on most of the trims except for the base Forester. Now looking at the rest of the profile, I like how Subaru makes the Forester pretty boxy. The boxy design gives you extra space on the interior. Uh, and then you have an upgraded suspension. The ground clearance on this car is about a half an inch taller versus other Foresters at 9.2 inches. That makes it have more ground clearance than something like the Toyota RAV4 Off-Road TRD and a Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk, which are basically this vehicle's two main competitors. Now looking at the rear, you can see, I wasn't really the biggest fan of the rear design in this Forester when it first came out. The taillights have this kind of C shape, almost looking like a lobster claw. It's an LED accent with an incandescent turn signal, incandescent reverse light. The Wilderness gives you again, the blacked out badges here. The Wilderness badge is kind of blacked out. A uh, plastic piece that connects the that uh, intersects the two taillight modules, and then of course the rear bumper has extra cladding over here, and you have a single chrome outlet exhaust tip with some nicely integrated parking sensors. Now, opening up the cargo area, uh, the Forester does have one of the most spacious cargo areas in the segment. In fact, Subaru's numbers seem a little bit on the small side compared to the segment. The company says you only get 27 cubic feet with the second row seats up. Uh, you can see the opening is huge and because it's a square design, uh, you, when you fold down the seats, they say you get up to 74 cubic feet of space, which is about five cubic feet more than what you're gonna find from the competition. But again, uh, Subaru says you can basically fit uh, an entire set of golf clubs kind of just right into this. You don't have to actually put it in lengthwise first. It's wide enough to be able to accommodate that and then sit in between the wheel wells, which is nice. Uh, underneath here, you can see this vehicle does come with a full-size spare tire, which is definitely necessary if you're going to be taking this vehicle off-road. You don't have to deal with a fix-a-flat kit or a donut, which is nice. You can also fold down these seats by pulling on this little latch back here. You can do it from the back. And then once you fold that down, you can see a ton of space and because this vehicle is so boxy, you also get a lot of floor uh, to ceiling space, which makes the cargo area very, very useful. So now that we've talked about the exterior changes for 2022, let's go ahead and hop inside the interior of this particular model. I wanna first show you guys the key fob. You can see Subaru Smart Key Access with Intelligent Key is standard on the Wilderness. It's still optional on the base version of the Forester, but at least you get them on premium trims and up. There's no remote start on the fob. However, you should be able to access that through the Subaru Starlink app if you guys actually own this vehicle. Now, as you approach the door and open the door, uh, uh, you can see the interior of the Wilderness comes with this exclusive gray StarTex with kind of the copper, anodized copper stitching and accents with the black interior, the two-tone. It's definitely a dark interior, but it goes well with the autumn green metallic exterior color. These seats you can see are an eight-way power with a two-way lumbar. No memory seats. These are heated seats. You get a four-way power on the passenger side. And I do like the Subaru Wilderness embossed on the actual headrest. It looks good. The door panel you can see has more of the contrasting stitching, nice soft touch materials here on the armrests soft touch over here, auto up down windows for the two front windows, and then another Subaru Wilderness badge here. The Carmen Carden stereo has nine speakers and it sounds pretty good. Now getting inside, you can see with 9.2 inches of ground clearance, the step in height is really easy. And then as I shut the door, the door has a relatively solid sounding thunk. Remember this is built off of the Subaru Global platform that it shares with the uh, Subaru Impreza. Now to start the vehicle up, the button is right here where you'd expect it to be. It is blocked by the steering wheel, but once you fire the vehicle up, you can see the gauges do that typical sweep. It has a small, I got, I want to say four inch helper screen there uh, with the graphics are actually kind of nice, but again, this is a more traditional look. And then you have the older infotainment system that we see in this vehicle, the eight inch touch screen, another helper screen over there. Uh, this system has been replaced with a larger 11.9 inch screen that you find in the WRX, in the, in, in the Outback, in the Legacy. 
I was hoping Subaru would add that to this vehicle along with the Ascent, but sadly those two vehicles uh, still carry on with this smaller eight inch screen. It does include Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but it's a wired connection. Um, so again, Subaru doesn't do the wireless connection, but this system works pretty well. It also includes uh, embedded GPS, uh, which I believe is a TomTom -tom unit that my tester has as part of an $1,800 option. It's nothing super special but it certainly gets the job done. And if for those of you who are tired of interiors that have too much technology, this is certainly going to fit the bill. Now, in terms of the materials on the dash, you can see this is a soft touch injection molded plastic. Same thing over here with a faux stitching for the airbag cover. It kind of carries over here where this is feels like a real stitching material where it's nice and soft touch over the center console, which is nice. When you put the vehicle into reverse, you can see there's your backup camera. It has rear automatic braking. It has um, distance markers and trajectory parking sensors and the re resolution is actually not bad uh, and what the wilderness also gives you is you push this button right here it gives you a front view camera that it gives it you on the eyebrow display i kind of wish that subaru would just put it on this display too uh, but that actually works when the vehicle is driving down the road i turned it on at like speeds of 35 miles an hour which is actually kind of interesting but that resolution is fine um, i do think that that Subaru should consider offering a full 360 camera. They actually don't offer that still, which is a little bit confusing. Um, the rest of the interior, you can see big traditional knobs for your volume and your climate control and your tuning knob. You have an automatic temperature control here, dual zone, which is nice. No wireless phone charging pad though. That's a little frustrating. I think you can add it as a dealer option. There is just two USB ports over there. They're the old USB A's. This controls the CVT transmission with more of that uh, dark copper or anodized copper accents. Your um, heated seat controls are over here, electronic parking brake, auto brake hold. And this right here, the wilderness gives you the dual X mode. So if I rotate this to the left, you can see it goes into the snow dirt, which all the other foresters have that. Rotate this knob to the right, it goes into deep snow and mud, which this is gonna alter, of course, your throttle mapping, the transmission programming, the traction control, and then just push it to go to normal. Uh, and then if you wanna change your drive mode here, go to Sport Sharp and then Intelligent. That is gonna basically function as, um, it's basically electronics where it tells the traction control and the four wheel drive system to react accordingly to different road surfaces. So there's no low range in this vehicle, but I tested this when I was off-roading and Bandit, it works fairly well. It's gonna be more than what most people are gonna want anyways in this segment. Center console you can see here is padded. It's a relatively good amount of storage in there. Um, a little bit more storage here from the cup holders. The seats are comfortable and supportive. I love the gray StarTex. It just feels really durable. Uh, it feels like you can get this wet, you can get it muddy. It's not gonna get damaged or anything like that. There is LED lighting in this cabin, which is nice. You can see the big glass panel roof. It looks almost like a regular sunroof. I'm surprised like this is manual. This is a pretty far reach to get back here. And this doesn't feel quite as tinted as I expected it to be. Subaru says it reduces UVs by 95%. It just feels like it's not tinted at all. Uh, open this up, you can see it's a bin style. It's stamped, but not lined with felt. So overall the cabin definitely feels a little bit dated if you guys are used to spending time in a lot of the newer competition. However, if you want something that's a little bit more simple, that's also comfortable with great visibility, great sight lines, a good amount of space. This is still going to be suffice for most. And, you know, it's got that typical, you know, Subaru build quality where nothing in this interior really squeaked or rattled and everything seems to be well put together. Checking out the back seat really quickly, you can see the Forester does offer one of the most spacious back seats in the segment. In fact, there's around 39 and a half inches of legroom back here, which is plentiful. You can see the seats, as I showed earlier, they do fold down in a 60-40 manner. They're covered in the same gray StarTex, which is nice. Materials back here are the same as the front, although this is a hard touch plastic as opposed to the soft touch in the front seats. The Wilderness comes with these nice Wilderness all-weather floor mats, which is great when it's raining and muddy out here. And if you're taking this vehicle off-roading, you can see once I get back here, plenty of room. You have kind of stadium style raised seating, which is nice. You have rear seat air vents here, no rear heated seats. You can get that on the touring version. You can see there are two USB charging ports over here. You have two level uh, storage pockets, which is nice. And then over here, if you fold this down, it gives you an armrest with two cup holders along with LED lighting back here, which is nice. And the roof you can see almost comes to the back here. So if you need to actually put car seats back here or full-size adults, the Forester will certainly suffice. This has one of the more roomier back seats in the segment. So last year, the Subaru Forester was the company's best-selling model and it outsold the Outback by 100 units. That's right, this vehicle, Subaru sold 154,723 compared to 154,623 Outbacks in that same time period. Nevertheless, this was the company's bestseller. It's a very important model. And now that I have some more time with the Forester Wilderness, this is the most rugged, um, off-road capable version of the Forester. But what's surprising actually, I've already driven this vehicle off-road. However, because of the new CVT and the different ratios, the lower first gear ratio, it makes this the quickest Forester in the lineup. 
uh, and it's not obviously as quick as the old Turbo Forester, but uh, with that lower first gear, you will notice some improved performance. So let's go ahead and see what this vehicle could do. will do zero to 60 wise. I have it in its sport mode right now. It's all wheel drive, remember, we'll brake torque it. And my first run, I got zero to 60 in 7.96 seconds. That's pretty much, I want to say a half a second faster than the last regular Forester that I've seen. Uh, I actually didn't get a chance to test like a regular Forester because when I had one, I didn't have my zero to 60 testing equipment, but most of the ones I'm seeing, they're like around 8.6, 8.7 seconds. So 7.9 is respectable, um, but it's definitely not going to blow the doors off of the turbocharged competition. Even the turbocharged Outback, uh, wilderness that I got, uh, that one was like 5.7 seconds. So it's about a second and a half faster than this. So I wish Subaru would consider putting the turbo engine in this vehicle, but 7.9 is certainly respectable. Um, you just kind of have to get past the thrashiness of the engine. Remember, this is the, a four cylinder with a CVT. Uh, the CVT itself is a good CVT, but let's go ahead and retest it and see. It's a little slow to get going, but once it gets going, the CVT really holds the revs there at 6,000. And there I got 8.59 seconds. Now this is going slightly uphill, so uh, I'll take the 7.9, basically eight seconds, zero to 60. It is perfectly respectable, and I wanna say it's faster than the last uh, four-cylinder RAV4 that I got. Um, the hybrid is obviously gonna be quicker than this by about a half a second, but uh, this is faster than vehicles like the base engine out of the Mazda CX-5 uh, versus the RAV4 uh, with the four-cylinder only gas engine and even the Hyundai Tucson with its gas only engine. Those are all slower than the Forester. And that's kind of what makes the Forester, you know, somewhat pleasing to drive is put your foot down here. The CVT is so quick to respond. Put the engine right into the meat of the power band. It even fakes shifts. Um, and, you know, the engine is thrashy sounding, but at least it's effective. Subaru's, you know, 2.5 liter, Boxer flat four has that, that boxer traditional growl that you're used to. And with the new ratios in the CVT and this eight speed manual mode, which actually rev matches pretty well. I'm actually kind of surprised how well it rev matches. Uh, for That's probably one of the best that I felt for a fake ratio manual mode in these CVTs. But again, this has an extra gear versus the uh, regular CVT and the other models. So that's pretty nice. There's also that sport sharp setting, which you only get in this model and in the Forester Sport, I believe. You can also put it into an intelligent mode here, which will back down the throttle response. Um, it also will make it shift a little bit sooner to get better gas mileage, but gas miles isn't really important in this model. This one actually went down by two MPG compared to the regular one because of the raised suspension, the tires, and then most more specifically the transmission with its uh, lower first gear ratios. But just driving this thing normally around town, the Forester has a really nice, easy drivability scale. It's very maneuverable. You can also see out of this SUV very well because of the big side windows, the thin A pillars, the boxy design, the view out of the back is completely unobscured. Um, and it's just a really easy car to drive. Couple that with the StarTech seats. This is the waterproof seats. It's basically like a faux leather material that's waterproof. Um, they're, it's, they're comfortable, they're soft, they're supportive. I've got two level heated seats. Um, the driver's seat is eight-way power. Uh, it's a uh, four-way power on the passenger side. Uh, no memory seats. You have to go for the uh, touring version to get that. But the Forester sadly does not offer cooled seats. That is something that you can get on this vehicle's main competitor, the Toyota RAV4 TRD Off-Road, by the way. But I do like the bigger panoramic roof. It lets in a good amount of light into this, this cabin, uh, which is necessary because it's a very dark interior. Uh, this vehicle is only available with this kind of gray with the black carpet and whatnot. Put your foot down here. Again, once it builds up the revs and you have to listen to that, it's perfectly fine, the power. Um, do I wish for more? Yes. Do I wish Subaru would do an electrified option like a hybrid? That would also be fantastic. I actually have so many people, including my parents, who really want a Forester like this, but they also want electrification, and that's where Subaru is missing the mark here. Um, that's why, you know, vehicles like the RAV4 hybrid exist, the Kia Sportage hybrid, the Hyundai Tucson hybrid, the Escape hybrid. The electrified option is very enticing, and I do wish that Subaru 
would get on that game. I mean, this this base engine is perfectly fine for a base engine, but it's the only choice. Other manufacturers offer more choices, and that's where the Forester's are also already starting to lag behind. The Forester's, all, well, the Forester's already lagging behind as well in terms of the infotainment system. This eight-inch touchscreen is just looking really small nowadays. You do have wireless, or you do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but it's not wireless. The gauge display here also is looking pretty dated, but it's also traditional. You have that little eyebrow lip display there, which actually looks surprisingly nice. I was surprised by that. The, the Subaru EyeSight technology is also standard. Um, however, the reverse automatic braking is optional. Uh, my tester uh, does not have that feature. Um, as standard, you have to check an option package to get it, along with the other trims like the Limited, you have to get an option package to get that. But overall, in my week's worth of testing, also I've been averaging about 23 MPG in mixed driving. That is lower than the EPA estimate of 25. Granted, I don't particularly drive these vehicles super efficiently. On the highway, uh, this got around 26 MPG. So again, a couple MPG below versus what the EPA rating is. You can basically blame the new transmission and these tires, which are a little bit more uh, rolling resistant than uh, the regular tires on the other trims. But nonetheless, it's not like a thirsty vehicle. At least it runs on regular gas. It shows around 400 miles, 420 miles on a full tank. So that's not terrible. Um, this vehicle has about a, I want to say a 14 and a half gallon gas tank. So it's not a huge uh, gas tank. Uh, the one thing that really is interesting to me is the, the panoramic roof actually feels like it's not tinted. When I have this thing open, it lets in a lot of light, which is nice. But when the sun beats down on you, uh, I'm confused because Subaru says it's 95% UV blocking glass, but it doesn't feel tinted. So that's something to keep in mind. You can, you can close that shade if you don't want the sun beating down on you. But overall, this is still a really easy car to live with on the road. Subaru basically gave us that extra off-road capability. Uh, but they didn't sacrifice any on-road comfort and they actually made it faster with the new CVT. So the wilderness package is very, very enticing, even for those of you who don't plan to go seriously off-road. Uh, I like the bits, the styling tr touches that this, this trim gives. And also for the money, it's not bad. Just keep in mind, the Outback Wilderness for a couple thousand more is way faster. It comes with that turbo engine and it has a slightly uh, larger interior to boot. So with just under 155,000 units sold in all of 2021, it's pretty easy to see why the Subaru Forester continues to be the company's best-selling model here in the United States. It really just offers a ton of different choices for a wide variety of buyers, starting of course from the base model all the way up to the touring version, which is the most luxury-oriented model, to this wilderness model, which I already showed you guys in my previous video that it's very capable off-road. Subarus have always been surprisingly capable and the wilderness models kind of take to the next level as opposed to just being like an appearance package that you find on some vehicles Subaru actually went the extra mile and gave us a little bit more capability from the better tires the increased ground clearance the skid plates to the revised suspension to the revised transmission that also improves acceleration there are still a couple of things that I think is fully holding the Forester back from being from being the top in the sales uh, chart I would like to see Subaru eventually offer a hybrid version. Uh, I would like to see them offer a turbocharged version again. I also would like to see them offer um, the ventilated seats that you can get in the Outback. I mean, really when the two vehicles are kind of neck and neck in terms of sales, I think it's okay for Subaru to kind of cross some of the features because I do think the Forester appeals to a slightly different buyer. The Outback, of course, is more of a race station wagon. Even though station wagon is a dirty word here in America, it's very successful for Subaru. This is going to appeal for those of you who are looking for a more traditional SUV. It's got that boxy uh, design. It's got more roof space on the inside. It's got a higher roof line because it's an SUV. And I also think this vehicle looks okay from certain angles. I do think that the refresh has helped it. I'm still not a fan of the rear end styling, but I do like what Subaru has done, of course, with the Wilderness model. I think it has the nice black accents, the upgraded wheels, and it just gives it a more rugged look that really justifies its new capability. Now, speaking of which, if you guys are looking to purchase a Forester, they're already on sale. They start at just over $25,000 for the base version. I recommend all of you at least spend $3,000 for the premium. That's going to give you a lot of the upgrades that most people expect in today's modern cars. The Wilderness model starts at $32,500, which is about three grand less than the Outback Wilderness. You are missing, of course, the turbocharged engine. My tester for about $1,800 adds the uh, power rear lift gate, the reverse automatic braking, the navigation system, all in. This one here is just under $36,000, which is about the same price as what you'd pay for a Forester uh, Touring. Now, personally, I might get the Touring model because I like the 
um, full leather interior in that model. Uh, and you also get the heated steering wheel and a couple of other niceties. However, I can't deny that this is a heck of a value. And it's also several grand cheaper versus its main rival, the Toyota RAV4 TRD Off-Road and a Jeep uh, Cherokee Trailhawk. Those vehicles do offer a few more premium features. The Jeep even offers a V6. But I think that this offers a very appealing combination of everything. And it's wrapped in a very affordable price tag. Well, with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2022 Subaru Forester Wilderness. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.